one of the best Garatina players in the world, Kotaro, who ended up qualifying for Japan Nats using a Garatina origin form in the 22 season, has created a new Garatina origin form team for this generation. And we're going to be trying out and seeing how well it can perform. This is a Garatina team. If you haven't seen the 22 version of the Garatina team, it plays pretty similarly, although some of the roles have been changed. A triple ghost move with the Garatina, having that access to the levitate ability thanks to its form change with the core, which is a different item, but I guess it's still the same thing at the end of the day, which gives it Garatina access to levitate, it powers up its ghost and dragon type moves, allows it to do some pretty nice damage. With the ability of Shadow Force to break through protects, but it's a two turn attack. Poltergeist, an immediate strong move. However, the downside is your opponent needs to hold an item as well as it can miss. And then Shadow Snake for some nice priority, which is very helpful in the Calyx Shadow Rider matchup. So Ghost Garatina able to do quite a bit. We've seen some common partners in the past and the Tornadus and the Landers does come back to return. Double Genie, this one running a choice band able to do a lot of damage with Choice Band Earthquake next to the Levitate Garatina, next to the Tornaz, which is also paired with the Leer Tech to help out the Landers dish out more damage, as well as the Garatina powering up its attacks. Really incredible damage output that can overwhelm teams that don't have a ground immunity or resist that can really surprise opponents. Terror Bug to even power up the U-turn. I think this is to help out against the Grassy Glides from the real boom as well as just power up the u-turn to help out against like actually getting the one shot surprises on like pokemon like the indies and the forigras because those pokemon are actually a bit troubling because they actually wall garatina which is something you want to get rid of as quickly as possible the rest of the team you have the king gambit because of garatina being vulnerable to incineroar and intimidate having this king gambit can help reduce that uh, option because you do scare them with that define ability black glass is able to do quite a bit and then Stone Edge, which is a surprise move that might catch some Incineroars off guard. The Urshifu with the Choice Scarf that can pair well with Tornadus, of course. The Leer Tech helping get rid of Incineroar. No brainer there. And then finally, this Varigraph option. Choice Specs is absolutely insane. A very fast Varigraph that's meant to do a lot of damage with Psy Shock, Hyper Voice, and then Trick and Trick Room. Now, trick with choice specs to help out against like clear enemy Calyx Ice Rider, lock them into a potential trick room, as well as some other support Pokemon can be very nice. And then trick room to help reverse other trick rooms, or if you actually need to set up trick room, if you're fa facing a faster team, that can also be a really nice option as well. If you'd like to check out the details of the team and the creator, they'll be linked in the description down below. Calyx Ice Rider, Annihilate, Farigraph, Torkoal, or Shifu Raging Bolt. I feel like this should be fine with Gambit on Annihilate, but we'll see. Uh, luckily, it can't actually affect Garatina. That's one of the funny things here. You actually can't affect Garatina <laughs> with uh, Final Gambit. So that's actually going to be at least a nice thing. Unfortunately, Farigraph is kind of annoying because they do want my Garatina. Mm. I'm to figure out how I want to maneuver this. I I do like the Garatina lead because it does force quite a bit for my opponent. I don't know if I really want to lead or Shifu in this matchup. It can't really do too much here. And I'm not jolly, so I can't even outspeed the Annihilate. I'd probably want King Gambit plus the Garatina. And then in the back, I, have, I don't have Rain Dance on the Torn, right? Yeah, I don't have Rain Dance on the Torn. I'm trying to figure out how I'm maneuvering the Trick Room. I think it's like Farigraph Landorus. Do I need a Raging Bolt answer? This is going to be a tricky one. <laughs> I think I they get Trick Room up very safely and I can't really do much, but maybe they don't see the Annihilate. Or maybe they don't want to bring the Annihilate line, which would actually be really ideal if they don't. Because I'd pressure a lot of damage onto the Kali. So let's see. Gonna be the lead of. Nope, they see it. Annihilate plus the Kali Ice. Okay. I like the idea of just going for a Poltergeist into the Kali Ice and protecting the 
So I have a few options. I don't want them to final gambit because I don't think I want them to get the free switch. I like the idea of just going for the poltergeist into the Cali Ice turn one and just protecting the King Gambit because they can't really. I don't know they have a hard punish other than protecting and maybe U-turning. If they go hard into Torkoal, then it's bad. And Trick Room with Terra. They have to Terra specifically, but we'll see. We will tear our Aratina and let's see if this ghost Terra Garatina can do a ton of damage and hopefully put things in the Shalsic range. I don't know if they have Ferrograph, which is why I kind of have to figure out something. They do Terra here. Are they going to U-turn or are they going to find a Gambit or are they going to Drain Punch? Terra Water on the Calyx Ice Rider. Not too surprising. Okay. So we will protect our King Gambit. Shadow Claw. That doesn't really do too much, but uh, that's kind of significant. Poltergeist hits the clear amulet, gets the ghost boost from the Terra. Let's see how much damage we do. Not bad, not amazing. Oh, they Glacial Lanced. Huh. Okay, Glacial Lance is interesting here. Do I think Black Glasses Kowtow KOs? It might. I like the idea of getting Ferrigarath in and going for the Kowtow into the... Kali Ice. Because if it does, then I have Ferrigarath with Choice Specs that's able to threaten so much damage and two Pokemon like that doesn't really care about Shadow Claw. Shadow Claw should confirm that it isn't a... It should confirm it's Choice Locked. So Kowtow. The high horse power. They're not trick rooming. Which I'm very shocked they're not trick rooming, but it works out for me because I get to go for just a hyper voice and I get to go for a kowtow into the annihilate. And I go for this because Shadow Claw is not doing any damage. If they switch out, they're just in a pin slot, and this is kind of a weird thing. They did not get trick room up at all in this game. So we're finally gonna see the annihilate retreat, but the thing is something's coming in and taking a lot of damage. Raging Bolt, that is taking a Kowtow plus a Hyper Voice in the next turn. It looks like I threatened the Sucker Punch too, so that's even more ideal. So I will go for the Hyper Voice into the Raging Bolt. It's a Solvest Raging Bolt confirmed. Here comes a Kowtow. So, so much damage. So, so much damage. Uh, if I think the Bolt is slow, which I think it probably is on this team, then I could probably just Hyper Voice and Kowtow the slot on the left of the Calyrex in case they try to go annihilate but it looks like no switches so I am able to KO the Calyrex Ice Rider and the Raging Bolt so that is really impressive right there just gets the knockout on both man Spectral Regrap being really good <laughs> it's being really good Kowtow into basically an empty slot but Annihilate is going to have to lock in, and the thing is, like, whatever move it's locked into, it's really awkward. So, let's see what the final Pokemon is. Going to be Urshifu and Annihilate. So, it's double fighting. Does this mean it's final Gambit coming out? I mean, my play is always to go Landorus for this slot. Ah, this position could actually still be a bit weird. I'm going to Sucker Punch the Annihilate... But and just going to Landris because I think Landris doesn't really accomplish too much in the remainder of the game. I think Ferrugar is the key mon that's going to finish off their Shifu. We know that they they can't Terra anymore, so I think we're in a pretty good spot. Sucker Punch does half. Close combat, perfect. Actually does do a lot of damage because we gave it the Defiant Boost, but the thing is it's not getting Knockout, which is big. They go for Surging into King Gambit in case I had a Defense of Terror for the close combat, which is fair. They also don't want to lower the defense on their Shifu. But at this point, I think I win the game now because I get to go out into Garatina. I have Shadow Sneak to pressure the knockout into the Annihilate. And then Choice Band Stomping Tantrum shit to shot her Shifu. Yes, so I go for Stomping Tantrum into the Urshifu slot. And I go for a Shadow Sneak into the... Annihilate. 
Talix Ice Rider Terra, they are Choice Scarf on the Annihilate, and I feel like Ur Urshifu can only really target some at a time, but like, yeah, it's not looking good for them. They go for Aqua Jet to hope that they can pick up the knockout, but nope. Uh, they needed a critical hit right there. Here comes a shot sneak. Was that Aqua? No, I can't. Well, it clicked close combat earlier. The Aqua, did, Aqua Jet did a lot, so it's probably Mystic Water. Summoning Tantrum should finish off the Urshifu in two hits. Yeah. And now we guarantee the win here. I go for Shadow Force plus uh, Summoning Tantrum. They go for Aqua Jet once again, but Summoning Tantrum is going to be enough damage. So I guess it's because they didn't want Trick Room because they actually brought Fast Mons in the back. <laughs> <laughs> well, Raging Bolt wasn't that fast, but it's not like I had a super fast team either. So they were kind of in a weird position. He went for Glacial Land, Shadow Claw, but Garatina, because we got rid of its Ice Weakness, we were able to actually tank it decently well, fire out some pretty good damage, and kind of overwhelmed them because we just kind of outsped everything. And what we didn't outsped, we had Priority 4 that was just threatening like that Annihilate. Calyx Shadow Rider, Incineroar, Reelaboom, Grimmsnarl, or Shifu, and Tornadus. So this is a very heavy setup, the Grimmsnarl game, which if I had Iron Head on King Gambit, I'd be like, oh, this is like really, really safe. Uh, I don't, but I still think it's kind of manageable. Mm, I just got to watch out because there is the Shadow Rider and their Shadow Rider is actually very, very scary. Hmm. I don't really like my own tour in this matchup. King Gambit's really good, especially if they lead our Shifu plus Calyx, which I wouldn't be surprised if they do. Mm. I think I like for Rigorath plus King Gambit a lot. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with that combo. And then in the back, I really do like the Garatina, which can put on a lot of pressure. And then I want to say it's Landris. It's either Landris or Shifu. Both are kind of work here. Mm, I think they're both good against Incineroar, which are, is the main way I'm lacking damage up. But I think I'm going to go Landris, try it out, see how it goes. Uh, otherwise, I think it would have been really nice for Urshifu, but Landris does give me a little bit more of a bulky option. Let's figure out what the Calyrex is going to go for, because the Calyrex is a little bit scary. And we Calyx or Shifu. That's not too surprising, really. So I'm leaning King Gamut because I threatened a Sucker Punch. I'm just going to go for a swap here with the King Gambit. Because I might as well always preserve it and not risk a close combat. I'm going to go onto my Garatina. I don't think they're clicking Astral in this position. And I'm going to click a Hyper Voice. Yeah, just get as much damage as I possibly can. So King Gambit will retreat into the Garatina. Try and absorb a close combat. This could be U-turn. We are going to see a Terra. I wouldn't be surprised if this is Kali because if I sucker punch that slot or something, or if I have a defensive Terra and I count out, you're in a really bad spot. We're going to see the Terra Fairy, which is not too surprising. As I mentioned before, Hyper Voice should do some pretty big damage. Raining Kiss going to come out into Farig. No, they tarred down the Garatina. Okay. Did do a lot of damage. Life Orb. It did close combat. Double up. Nice. Okay, perfect. And here comes the Hyper Voice. This should do some pretty big damage. Yeah, pretty nice. I want to say with Terra Ghost, I pick up the Knockout. Shadow Sneak. I kind of like the idea of just regular Shadow Sneaking now. Because I would KO anyway, but if they go Incineroar, then like the Calyx still is in a weird spot because they can't knock out the Ferrigoraf. I'm going to Shadow Sneak and I'm going to Hyper Voice. They could switch out the Calyx for Incineroar, but that's fine. Uh, they don't switch at all, so Shadow Sneak comes out. Barely misses the knock on Calyx, actually. Okay, that's not really ideal, but still think it's kind of acceptable. Actually, yeah, it is because uh, they're going to give me the Hyper Voice double knockout here, which I will take. I will take a double knockout here. So I really thought Shadowseek would have KO'd, but maybe it's just some investment. But then again, it's like it used to be a four times effective move and now it's only a neutral. But uh, if they did go Incineroar, it's definitely not worth it. So they're not choice locked under a Shifu. They go for Surging Strikes, but it's not going to be nowhere near enough to pick up the knockout for Regraph. And then 
Choice Specs Hyper Voice is too hard to switch into. And we'll pick up the knockout on both Pokemon here. So I am able to get a 2v3 situation. And I still have Terra. That's absolutely fantastic. So we are able to eliminate the Calyrex and the Urshifu. Let's find out what the last two are. As I am going to go King Gambit always, because if they do have Incineroar, give me that Defiant boost. There's the Incineroar. And is it real boom back? <laughs> it's a bit too easy sometimes. <laughs> Bring out the King Gambit. All right. Uh, how do I make sure I don't screw up this game? I think I just click protect and I click hyper voice. Yeah, I just sack for Rigoraf if necessary. Just protect and click hyper voice. Get as much damage as I possibly can on these mods. So if the I if the Incineroar is I don't know a Focus Ash or Shuck a Berry, then I have a backup. We protect. Also, don't want Landers taking a Wood Hammer on a switch. Hyper voice, we're faster with Furigraph because we have speed. What hammer gonna come out into the Furigra, pick up the knockout, but at that rate, it should seal it up here. Do they even have Flare Blitz? I feel like they should have Flare Blitz on this team. If they don't have Flare Blitz, there's no chance. Yeah, okay. They do have Flare Blitz. Mm. Do I want to lock in the Terra Flying? I guess I could. There really is no reason to not lock Terra. Well, actually, no. Yeah, I have Terra Bug, actually. I mean, I could Terra Bug U-Turn because it's funny. <laughs> I don't think the Incineroar is letting me a choice man stopping Tantrum, and I'm pretty sure Crit Grassy Glide's not KOing. Because they would need to be choice banned, I think, in order to KO, and they are definitely not choice banned if they swap here. So I'm going to Kowtow the Rillaboom, and I'm just going to click Stomping Tantrum into the Incineroar. They already used Terra. Grassy Glide going to come out, but as you can see, just there's no damage. It's definitely not a Miracle Seed boosted either. Tommy Tandrum gonna finish off the Incineroar. Kowtow the Aurelaboom. And that is just gonna wipe this board state. So. Very solid. Choice picks for Rigoraf doing some big damage. Goodbye, Aurelaboom. <laughs> and that is gonna be it. It's actually really interesting how the dynamic works with the team. But overall, it's just able to get some very quick offensive pacing. Incineroar Wimps got Maridon, Iron Hands, or Shifu, and the Perigorav. This is... Okay, I do have a ground type, which actually makes this game a lot easier. Because I actually have a way to handle the Maridon tricks. Perigorav is a little bit hard. But we could probably manage with the right positioning. I do like Perigorav lead. I think for... Or not Perigorav. I like the... I like the lead of Garatina. Because it does put on a lot of damage output. And then I think I do like Torn. I absolutely want the Landris because of the ground immunity. Like, I'm thinking I could maybe bait something with, like, an electric move with Torn and then, like, go into Landris afterward. So that would be really nice. And then the last Pokemon, probably our Shifu to Revenge KO things. Yes. So what's going to be really important is my Landris in this matchup. So Landris is a really key member. In order to do a lot with Landris... It depends on A, if it's Ice Punch Iron Hands, because Ice Punch Iron Hands could be a factor on this team. I don't think the Ferrari is probably going to be offensive on this set, though. It's probably going to be Electric Seed, so that's probably easier to handle. The Urshifu can be something that I have to respect because of the Landers. Uh, it's going to be something that I do have to figure out. Let's see what they do here, though, because if it's Maridon, we'll play a game here that makes it interesting, I suppose. I'm just got Maridon. All right, let's play our game. So they have Encore as a threat. Hmm, I don't have a Terra Fairy anywhere. I mean, my best play that doesn't involve too much risk is like protecting my Garatina and going to Lando. Yes. Because they can Draco Meteor turn one. So I'm aware that they can Draco Meteor turn one. 
You're not going to Draco to Torn, I think, turn one. I think you would just click Tailwind, Draco into Garatina. And that's okay if you do. I had to play around the Encore a bit, but I think it's still manageable. I might have to sack her Shifu, but sacking her Shifu is completely okay in order to get a decent position. As long as I can figure out a way to maneuver this Tailwind coming up and uh, knock out that Whimsicott afterward, I think it's okay. We're going to see the Tailwind come out from the Whimsicott. Maybe I should have Bleak Winded here, but we'll see. Oh, they both switched. Okay, they kind of went greedy here because the Landers, yep. So am I okay with losing Torn here? Or do I want to stay in on the Encore? I do kind of like the idea of just going for a Poltergeist if possible. I feel like this is always Encore, but I don't have a switch. I didn't, I don't really have anything that could switch into this Volt Switch. I think the idea here is just to Poltergeist the Maridon and you turn out the Whimsicott. It should be Encore into Volt Switch the uh, slot here. I could have went for a double type, but I don't think that's ever worth it. They do go for the Encore. Shadow Sneak wasn't going to change anything because the Encore was priority. They do go for a Volt Switch. Garrettin actually ate that up. <laughs> All right, let's see who they're bringing out next. I don't know what they really had to threaten the Garrettin at the moment. They're going to go into our Shifu. That's actually really good for me. As I go for the U-turn in the Whimsicott, I break a potential Focus Sash. Now I get to go Torn, and I get to click Bleak Wind. Unless they protect an U-turn, but that's fine, because they're wasting their own Tailwind turns. And I get to reset my Garatina. So I will go out in our Shifu. I think this is just Moonblast, but if I trade Whimsicott for Whim if I trade Whimsicott for Shifu, I think that's a really good trade in my book. So I'm going to Bleak Wind and uh, swap. They could double here. Like, they could double my Torn, which I think is actually fine. Because then I would just Shadow Sneak the Whimsicott and close combat to the or Shifu. So I, I don't think that's a problem. Do I want Tailwind up? I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, I just want, want a Bleak Wind. I don't think Tailwind's ever needed here. Although, because the Garrity is not doing anything, they could do the double here. Okay, Whimsicott's going to retreat, which is fine. Into Incineroar. Okay, interesting switch. It works out really well for me. Because I can get the Tailwind momentum here. Alright, Garrity are going to swap out into the... Urshifu, what did they click here with? Uh, there, Urshifu. A surging, alright. It's not a choice band, so we're able to tank the attack just fine. If we land a Bleak Wind, uh, specifically into Urshifu, we're in a really good spot. Uh, okay. Uh, that I'll take. We actually KO'd Urshifu, which is actually pretty big. Alright, I'll gladly take the KO on Urshifu. Gladly, gladly take the KO on her Shifu. Is Maridon? If they go Maridon, they have a weird kind of game to play. Yeah, Maridon comes out. The thing is, if they go for an electric move, I'm okay if they go for the electric move here. I think I always just click Surging Strikes into the Incineroar. And I think I always Tailwind. Because the only way they can... Yeah, no, this this works out fine. I'm trying to figure out, like, oh, how do they get into a good spot? Because, like, we saw it wasn't life for Maradon. So I'm thinking that this is going to be, like, a standard Specs variant. I want to make sure I always can get Tailwind up in this part of the game. Because they have to match Tailwind in order to have a chance in this. Otherwise, I just overwhelm them. Because all their mods are now weak to Landers Earthquake. If they go for Draco Meteor to read a lander switch, then I just bring out my landers for free afterward, and I think I'm in a good spot, so I think that's all right. Protect a Torn. They go for Fake Out or Shifu, so be it. Yeah, they did Draco Meteor to Torn because they're trying to read the Lando switch, but I didn't go for it. 
Now I just go for a certain strikes into the Incineroar. And I just click Tailwind. Because now I get a speed advantage and the thing is they have to get out their Whims of God. They might even have to Terra their Incineroar to Grass here. And they Terra the Incineroar to Grass. Now they don't have a switch into Ghost Moves from my Giratina. They will gain, I guess, a switch into my Landers, but that's kind of okay. That's kind of okay, yeah. Also, Electric Terrain is ending soon, I'm pretty sure. They do Terra. Incineroar, yep. Terra Grass is to be expected. I'm not really too worried about, like, will o -Wisp or Knockoff or anything, because uh, there should be Assault Vest Incineroar, like, on the usual teams. Actually, yeah, I guess Iron Heads could be Assault... Assault Vest on this team, so I actually don't know what the Incineroar is confirmed. Surging Strikes into Incineroar. I get Chip. More importantly, what are you actually clicking here? I guess it could get a double knockout, but if you get a double knockout, that's fine. Yeah, like, let you go for the Draco Meteor, sure. Then next turn, I just go for Earthquake Poltergeist, and you never get a good position. Actually, no, yeah. They do they do go for the double knockout. Okay, that's that works out fine for me. It's now locked into Draco Meteor at minus two, and the terrain's gone. So they can't reset terrain and get into good position. So yeah, I just go for Landers plus the plus the Garatina. I click Earthquake plus. I should always Terra. I mean, I always get an Earthquake here. Let's see. They can either switch my ride on out. Yeah, no, I just always go for a Terra and a Poltergeist into the Incineroar. I think I always go for the Terra because I actually don't know if I KO the Incineroar. If this is Citrus Berry Incin with the change, well, that's something that's like their one out is like. They have to U-turn. No, they would have to parting shot because if they're Citrus Berry, they're probably parting and not U-turn. Let's see. If they say I'm at both, I think they lose because I'm pretty sure that Terra Ground Earthquake just picks up the knockout into the Maridon. And then Whimsicott, I don't... I just feel like Lander or Landers just clicks Earthquake and kind of wins the game. Because they don't exactly have a great way of removing the Landers. Looks like they're staying, so I am going to be able to get a Choice Bandit Earthquake off. They don't have a switch. Maridon does go down, and it looks like... I don't know what the item on the Incineroar. I guess we'll find out after this turn, because uh, we get a Poltergeist off. It was Citrus Berry. Oh my goodness, they actually... They actually had it out. They would have had to sack the Whimsicott, and they would have had to get the Citrus Berry... Parting shot out. That way they have fake out active on deck and they get to reset the terrain. Holy cow. The fact that Landers didn't activate that Citrus Berry was actually so clutch. I guess like there could have been an out where I go for um, Phantom Force or something. But oh my goodness. Oh wait. Yeah. Whimsicott was definitely going down to Choice Band Earthquake there. Will we find out? Nope. Because I'm clicking Shadow Sneak into that Whimsicott. <laughs> and they're also going to forfeit the game. Oh, because of the Incineroar Citrus Berry, that could have actually been, uh, that could have been something. Like, we definitely could have still lost the game. But then again, I don't know, because I still had to, I was still always going to have to tail an advantage, which is the thing. I guess it depends on who they party shot. They party sh shot out the Lando. I think, like, Garatina could still win, depending on who they target with the uh, Marana, because Right, I still has to lock in the Draco Meteor, which is kind of the awkward part. And if I get the call right of who they target, if I read them to target the Lando and Garatina gets two hits into the Maradon, I think I pick up the knockout and I win the game. If they target the Garatina, I have to read whether I protect or not that turn. So still a game, but oh, closer than it could than it needed to be. <laughs> Sloking and Charizard is a cool team with Groudon, Incineroar, Fluttermane, and the Raging Bolt. So I really like Garatina because Garatina's natural typing is just great against this. Landris is also really good. 
So I kind of want to lead the Garatina plus Landorus. I think it's really strong in this matchup. In the back, it's hard to say. I would probably want to go with Farigarath. I don't know. Do I want Urshifu? Urshifu is kind of weak in this matchup. I feel like I'd probably rather not want Urshifu. I want King Gambit because Sucker Punch could be like really nice in an endgame scenario against this team. I'm a little bit worried about like how I hit Incineroar, but I think I can manage. Also, like our Shifu is late only for Incineroar, like Groudon. Like it can be Groudon technically, but it's not exactly that amazing. I think I'd rather have King Gambit because the Sucker Punch seems stronger against most of the other Pokemon. I mean, Landris is a good lead. Garatina is really strong here. Let's just see what they decide to go for. Gonna be the Raging Bolt and Groudon. All right. This is a really good lead for me because I get to click Earthquake and Poltergeist and I can't really get punished here. Pretty sure I do so much damage to the Raging Bolt. If they want to go Incineroar, they take so much. I don't really want to tear the Garatina. I think I'm just going to click Earthquake and Poltergeist. Or I could click... Um, Shadow Force 2. I don't know if I really want to do that. I guess if I'm like, okay, Incineroar has to switch in, then maybe. But I think I'm just going to go for Poltergeist Earthquake. The Groudon is going to retreat, so this is probably Incineroar. Yep. I mean, they're still taking a ton of damage regardless. Like, this is a lot of damage coming up. All right, Raging Bull Terra. So they're trying to tear out of this situation. Are they electric? Probably not if you make this play, right? Yeah, it's fairy. Okay. Where are they taking the knockout on? No matter what, I still got a pretty decent turn off, I think. There's Choice Band Earthquake. I'd still say this is going to do like 30, 40% to the Raging Bolt. A bit less than I thought, actually. Wow, that's a lot less than I thought. Is Cinnora able to heal back up? Here comes a Poltergeist. Nice, I do land, which is actually really crucial. Good damage. Snarl. I guess they thought I was Draco Meteor. Sure. Is there a downside to me clicking Poltergeist? I mean, the only chance is like I miss, right? But otherwise, I do get a knockout either way because they already used their Terra. So I'm pretty sure I just Earthquake Poltergeist through their team. I can't really see anything other than the 90% screw me over here. This is Assault Vest, so it wasn't Booster. Uh, they fake out the Lando. Poltergeist still KOs the Raging Bolt, assuming I hit. Yeah, I mean, this is a really tough spot for them. <laughs> This is a really tough spot for them. They just didn't have any ground immunities. That's why you want some kind of ground immunity or resist. It's <laughs> because otherwise, like when you fight a ground type Pokemon, it will mess up your world. But I can still get screwed here. So let's see. As you can see, you could still get screwed here. Granted, I think I'm still okay. Uh... <laughs> I think I'm going to Hyper Voice and I'm going to swap to King Gambit. I'm hoping that this fast, and I mean fast, for Rigorath with Choice Specs, Terra, Normal, Hyper Voice will be able to pick up KOs on these two while outspeeding. Because I, unless this bolt is really fast, and by the way, it took the Earthquake, it should be, it should be like, okay, they switched out for some reason into Flutter. All right. I still get a mass amount of damage, which is nice. Oh, this endgame is still going to be like really sad. All right, Terra normal. 
Unfortunately, since I locked a Hyper Voice, I thought about Psy Shocking, but it just was never worth it. All right, Hyper Voice should KO Incineroar, I would say. Unless this is Spadef Incineroar, but I don't think... Oh, wow, it actually did take it. Wait, they gave me... Thank you for knocking out my choice specs. That actually gives me an out. <laughs> That actually gives me a way out. I think this is fire move instant. I actually have no clue. I think it's just better to hyper voice and kowtow to flutter main. They go for moon blast. They target down to King Gambit. It's specs. Okay. So if they target for off, it could have actually been like really screwed. But uh, this actually seems like a good position. Because I get the KO onto the Incineroar. Nice. And I get a big Kowtow cleave off into the Flutter main. So I got two knockouts. Oh my goodness. This could have been a really different game if they decide the other. The second one is just KO. I'm kind of curious. Because they might have... I have no clue. Maybe Sucker Punch was always a play. Maybe it would have just KO'd. All right, Raging Bolt in next to Groudon. Hmm. This is where it gets tricky. Because I don't think Hyper Voice KOs anymore. Psy Shock probably does. Oh, boy. I don't know if I go down to Blaze. That's my problem. I think I swap out into Landers and Psy Shock. I want to say Psy Shock does more because of the Assault Vest on the Raging Bolt. I'm hoping it's enough to pick up the KO because I don't know. Like, the Bandit Earthquake at minus one didn't do too much of the Bolt. A Heat Crash. I thought they were going to blades. Oh no. Also, why is that Groudon so fast? Die shock. Well. You know what? I say the positions like they are. Whether I miss an attack or not. I think we just had a pretty much an auto win if we did hit it. And unfortunately, this is the game we play. Uh, I'll play my out, I suppose, which is them for some reason. Well, actually, yeah, no, my out, what, no matter what, they should just click key crash here. So I had no out anyway. Uh, Poltergeist, why do you have to be 90% accuracy? <laughs> That's my one grip with Garatina. That's one of my grips with Garatina. Why does Galax get a spread like 120 base power move? And Garatina, one of its best moves that isn't a Shadow Force because of the because of the two turns literally is having to hit an inaccurate 90% move. All right, let's go over the games. And game one was able to overwhelm the start with Garatina doing some big damage as the Calyx not setting up Trick Room allowed me to outspeed and knock it out, leaving the two remaining fighting types left on the field that my remaining Pokemon could handle. Game two, the fast choice specs for Rigref was able to shine doing massive damage onto my opponent, destroying the lead and setting up for my end game landers to clean up. In game three, a battle positioning against a Maridon, but I was able to get some nice pins due to the nature of their team, and they had no safe switch ins after the Incineroar committed to Terra. In game four, should have never said things out loud as the Raging Bolt was pinned, assuming I landed the Poltergeist, but my luck, like the odds of winning, that battle were dragged down into the distortion world. Overall, Garatina Origin form, I had a lot of fun with it. I think the choice specs for Rigoroth was actually a surprise. I was not expecting how much damage it would do, and it, it its immediate output is actually kind of crazy. 
The Choice Band Lander is always a fun combo. I do think it is a little bit weaker in the format, but it is nice because Maridon did pick up. And so you can actually like ground coverage is very, very nice to have right now. The Garatina, it's a bit awkward. There's a lot more normal types, I think, because Farigra is actually a Pokemon. Indy was something that I felt like pretty hard. I think the combination of Indy plus Calyx Shadow Rider is actually like really tough for this team. I don't know how you really win other than maybe the U-turn, but it can be very hard if they preserve the Indy. So it's a little bit awkward there. The team's not perfect, but it does have some really fun, strong suits and garatina could do some pretty massive damage especially with the ghost terror that was surprising to see if you'd like to check out the details of the team and the creator they'll be linked in the description down below and if you'd like to try out the rental code hopefully it's still available on the screen but otherwise subscribe to the channel for more vgc content as always